All right, so far so good. We've got a slingshot, it works. We can knock things down. We've got a camera that follows it. So we can kind of see what's going on. Those are all important things. Um, now we need some kind of a goal in the game. Right? It can be fun to fire things and you know, shoot balls in the air. Hooray! But, you know, gamers want a goal. So let's go ahead and add that now. I want to add some kind of a target to aim for. So I'm going to add a little star object here. Um, you can probably find a star object a model on some website like modelsresource.com or you could just use a different object like a sphere or a box or something like that. You don't have to have a fancy star model, but I do so I'll use it here. I'm going to go ahead and import that object and I'll import the texture too. I'll put star model on the main screen and it's way too big. So let's see, I'm going to change the position to 0, 0, 0. I'm going to scale it way down. I think 0 0.7 should be a good size. Nope. I mean 0 0.07. 0 0.07. There we go. I'd like it to be small enough that it can kind of fit within one of these boxed areas. Because eventually I'd like to, you know, just hit it. Um, for testing purposes, I'll probably leave it out here, though. But eventually my goal is to kind of hide it inside the house, and you have to knock down the house, kind of hit that star. All right, so I've got my star model right there. So I want to make sure the Z position is zero so it can get hit. That looks good. Um, I'd like to apply a material to it. So in the Assets panel, I'll right-click and create a material called Matt underscore star. Apply the texture. Adjust some of the settings. Apply it right like that. That looks good. Um, some other things I have to set for this star. I'm going to set a rigid body. Even though uh, objects aren't going to interact with it, they aren't going to bounce off of the star, in order to detect the different collisions, I need to add a rigid body. And then I need to add a custom collision mesh to it, unlike the cylinders and the boxes and the spheres, which get uh, prearranged collision meshes set up for you. I need to go to the star model and click on underneath it, default is the name of the mesh. And so when I click on default, in the inspector panel you should see a mesh filter and a mesh renderer. I'm going to add a component under physics, a mesh collider. And it's going to be convex. And I'm going to say is trigger. Right? It's not something that objects really interact with, it just signals when it's been hit. Alright, so I've got that. Now I'm going to write some code which basically says, if the ball hits the star, I win. I'd like some kind of a you win message to be on the screen, too. So I'll set that up as well. So I've got my star. Let's see. Let's set up some user interface elements next. I'm going to go ahead and right-click in the hierarchy panel. I'm going to create a UI text. I'm going to name this first one to win text. So I'm going to set up the canvas a little bit. I always like the canvas to scale with the screen size, so I changed the UI scale mode to scale with screen size. So then I'm going to click on win text and zoom out a bit so I can see it. Uh, let's see, I'd like this to be a lot bigger, so I'll change my tool up here make this box bigger and click to drag it and center it. Um, the text, maybe that'll say, you win. Um, Arial font we'll leave for now. Font style, maybe I'll make it bold and italic. Font size, much bigger, maybe size 80. Cool. Um, the alignment, I'm gonna make it centered horizontally and centered vertically. So that's perfectly centered. Uh, I'd like the color to pop a little bit. And since you win by hitting an orange star, maybe I'll make this an orange color. So I'll click on color and change that to orange. Nice bright color. And 
also to make it easier to read it helps to add some extra effects so I'm going to scroll down in the inspector to where it says add component under UI effects add an outline that's kind of nice I'll do it again I'll scroll down the inspector add component UI effect shadow this makes it a lot easier to see some contrast is always good. Um, while we're here, I also want to set up the next feature as well. We're going to get you in to appear. I also like to keep track of a score. Right? You've got an interactive game, you've got a win condition. You also want to know how well the player is doing. So I'll create another text object. So right click UI text. I'll rename this to score text. I can hardly see it. It's right back here. I want to move this up, make it larger. I want to change the font settings so it looks kind of like the UN message, except a little bit smaller. Uh, maybe for text I'll have it say, shots fired. Zero to start. I want the font to be, I'll make this bold, make it much larger, 48. Sounds good. Let's see, um, I'd like to change the color. I'd like to try that orangish color again. And I'd like to add the same effects. So I'm going to go add components, UI effects outline, add component, UI effects shadow. And it shows up a lot more nicely. All right. So let's add some code that'll make this message appear when the ball collides with a star. I'm going to go back to my main camera. For testing purposes, I want to take the star and definitely move it somewhere else. I don't want to waste your time by watching to see how bad I am at this game. So I'll go ahead and I'll move the star right next to this. All right. So we need to add another script, which I'll attach to the star. So I'm going to go ahead and right-click, create a C-sharp script. Um, I'll call it goal, because this is the goal of the game. And that didn't quite open, so I'll try that again. Goal. There we go. All right, so how does goal work? Goal works if there's some kind of a collision with an object. And when I hit the goal, I want some text to display. So what I'll do is I need a reference to the text. So public text, oops, it's auto-completing to the wrong thing because I need to import another package. First up top, I'll say using Unity Engine dot UI. Then I'll create a public text object called Win Text. And when the game starts, I don't want it to be visible, so I'll say when text dot enabled equals false. That means it will not render. And then whenever there's a collision, I get that with the method on trigger enter. It takes as input a collider object, which I will name other as it contains information about the other object. Um, one thing to be careful about is there's two methods which are very similar in purpose. There's on collision enter and on trigger enter. We want to use on trigger enter because our star is a trigger. All right, so I need to see what triggered the collision. In particular, I'm not interested if bricks or blocks hit the star. I'm just interested if the ball hits the star. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to tag the ball to make it easier for the system to figure out what hit the star. So, mental note, I'll do that in a minute. Um, the condition is going to be if the other game object has a tag of ball, which I'll set in a moment, um, then say win text dot enabled is true, so I can see it. And I can go ahead and destroy the star because I hit it. All 
All right, that sounds good. Um, and just for fun while we're here too, uh, to make the star interesting, I'm actually going to do a little bit of animation. I'd like to get the star to spin in place. And I can do that in the update method pretty easily. This dot transform dot local rotation is going to be equal to well, the rotation information is stored in the quaternion class. Uh, Euler 0, 1, 0. I'll rotate it around the y-axis and I'll multiply that by this transforms local rotation. It's had a nice spinning effect. So I'll save this. I need to attach the goal script to the star. Before I do that, let's clean things up a little bit. Let's take star texture, put it in textures, star material, put it in materials. I'll even make a uh, models folder. Create a folder called models. In star model, I'll drag that down here and I'll make it a prefab. Now you could imagine a game someday where you have many stars you have to collide and hit. So that would be a useful thing to do. Alright, so let's see. Get my prefab here. So I'll delete this. Alright, and I'd like to go ahead and attach a script to this object. Right, no script attached yet. I'll attach the goal script. And the goal script needs to know now, what's the wind text of which you speak? So wind text, I'll drag that over here and I'll give it a try. Let's go ahead and hit play. Um, that did not show up at all. Hmm, mysterious. Let's take a look. So you have this object, aha! The z-coordinate, gotta make sure this is right. Let's see, so the z-coordinate of star model is zero. When I dragged it on, for some reason the z-coordinate is all messed up. I want that to be zero. Ah, there's something else I need to do. Uh, the star object should not be affected by gravity. So with the star object selected, select is kinematic, so it doesn't fall down through everything. Let's try that again. Alright, excellent. I've got a star not affected by gravity, spinning ever so gently. I'll click and drag, and not seeing this yet. Let's see. Do I have all the collision things set up? Let me take a look. Oh, of course I have all the all the things set up. The thing I haven't done yet is I can only detect collision with a ball. I need to tag the balls. So let me go over to tag, add a tag. And so here I'm creating a tag called ball. And then clicking on the ball prefab, I actually need to go ahead and apply that tag. Now I should be able to win the game. Bam! I'm a winner! All right. Next thing I'd like to do is change the shots fired so I can keep track of that more easily. A uh, good place to do this is probably inside the slingshot code. So inside slingshot, I'm going to go ahead and add some more variables. So going all the way back up to the top. See, what variables am I going to need? Well, I need to keep track of the number of shots. Um, so I'll create a private int variable called shots. How many balls have I fired? And then I'll say uh, create a public text object. Before I do that, I need to import the right classes. See, so using Unity Engine dot UI. Right, and now I can create another variable, a public variable, text. I'll call this score text. And when the game starts, I'd like to change the message here. Um, score text dot text, set that equal to, let's say, shots fired, 
plus shots. Let me copy in this line of code because I'm going to need it again momentarily. So select all of that and copy. Now later on when we fire the ball we want to increment the value of shots and then update the text. So we'll scroll down to the update method. This part right down here after we set the cam target. Remember this is when you release the mouse button. I'll add another line shots plus equals one and then paste that text from before this should update the number of shots that have been fired go ahead and save and we'll give this a run see the other thing we'll have to do though is remember slingshot if we click on that we've got to make sure all the different variables we need to set are set I need to tell the script where the score text is Right, it's right there. Now I'll go ahead and try. Score text shots fired is zero. I fire, there's one, there's two, there's three. All right, this seems to be working quite well.